How's it going y'all, it's Super Pirate Pros coming back to you with another paper deck profile, paper, cardboard, whatever you guys call cards. We're gonna look back again at Rebecca. This is the best build I've got that I've used in the simulator and it's the one that's got me the most wins out of anything. It's not the strongest leader, so what can you expect? But I've done my best with it and I hope that you can build upon it after looking at the way I've built my deck. Anyways, let's get started. We all know what she does by now. Uh, she's a multicolor leader that can't attack, sadly, and she just gets to draw a bunch of cards for free for resting one dawn. So she's amazing. And let's start off with first, we've got Gaiats Gates. He uh, has a very useless effect. He's only there for a 2k and because he's searchable being a Dress Rosa. So we don't care about his effect. It's not ever going to come up because your big guys are ready to do that, like Luffy. Anyways, let's go to Rebecca, your searcher. Obviously, you gotta play four of hers. It's a travesty that she never got an alt art. She really should have gotten one. That would have been really cool. So, four Rebecca's. Next, you gotta play Rebecca's father, the one legged toy soldier. This guy, you can trash him on play to give an opponent's character minus three costs, which is pretty damn useful. And besides that, he's also a 2k, which is pretty amazing. So, that's why we're playing him. He's a better 2k than Gayat. It's a much more useful effect than the Gaiats. I found room for one ideal idea. He's just a simple blocker. Sometimes you just need to throw an extra blocker there just to survive a game where you feel like your opponent can only attack a certain amount of times. He's there for that. And next up, Rebecca's father again, uh, Kairos. He will uh, KO a guy that's one cost and I put four of him because it kind of sucks when you don't see him. Against Sakazuki, of course, they can just bottom deck him for free with stuff like Houndblaze and whatever. But, you know, Sakazuki, uh, yeah, he beats every deck, so we don't really care. <laughs> what can you do about Sakazuki besides pray that they don't have their cards, right? But either way, you trash a card from the top life, and it sucks when you don't see him. Also, Kairos is very good against every other leader. Other leaders always struggle to get rid of him. For example, NL. They're not really going to get rid of Kairos anytime soon, or they'll have to struggle once you have your stage and your leader active. Up next, I found room for one. Uh, Solomon. Solomon is on play. You get to do minus two cost to a character, and you trash one from the top deck. And then also when attacking, you get to do another minus two, so he constantly gets to keep doing it. And if you happen to have Dress Rosa on board, you get to on play, have him uh, minus two an opponent. And then attack immediately, minus another 2 to an opponent. So somebody will go minus 4 cost for this guy. So, 1 of Solomon. Up next, uh, of course, you got to play 4 Bartholomews. On top of being a 2k, he's a blocker that's only cost 3. So that's pretty amazing. Really good card. you got to play 4 of him. One of the best uh, black blockers in all of the color black. Next up, Kobe. Just one Kobe. Sometimes you gotta surprise them with the one Kobe. They kill something that has three cost or less, so it's sometimes more useful than Kairos if you don't have the cards to reduce the cost yet. So you have Kobe. And you'll see Kobe is something else we can play later on with uh, the four drop Rebecca, so he's useful for that too. And of course, we've got Hina, the one that does minus four cost, only playing two of hers, because we can play her out with the Rebecca uh, four drop character. So only round, only two of her is okay because you can see her a lot because this deck, it mills a lot through a Rebecca effect. She'll get in the trash and through the Rebecca leader effect, she'll also find her way in the trash. So you just want to pick her up later on with uh, the Rebecca character card that's four drop. And since we're playing Hina, we're going to play one Rob Lucci. Only one because his effect um, takes away things from the bottom from your trash. So that's why I don't want to play too many of him. Plus, he's not searchable either way, and he has no counter. So he's only something you want to do if you can actually get away with KOing two cards. And then he has a nice stat at 4-6. So room for one, Rob Lucci. And if we're playing Hina and Rob Lucci, of course, we have to be playing the 4-drop Rebecca. One of the best cards in this whole deck, especially because she's searchable through the leader. Little Rebecca can search her, the 1-drop, because her name is Rebecca. But the leader does not have a Rebecca restriction, so she can pick her up uh, if you see her. And of course, on play, on top of being a blocker, you get to pick up a, a, a black card that is cost 3 to 7, and then play one that is cost 3 or less from the hand. So she has a variety in this deck. You can pick up things like Rob Lucci, pick up Hina and play Hina, pick up Kobe and play Kobe, uh, Bartholomew just to pick up a 2k and then play something else. And the best thing about Rebecca that 
other decks can't do, like Sakazuki, is she can pick up Kairos or just play the Kairos from the hand, which is a really cool effect to be going for. So I love the combo of Rebecca into Kairos. That's why I'm playing four and four, so I can make sure I see both of them together in some way throughout the game. And then another thing is uh, our Lumbus Columbus. Of course, we got to go with him. He's the one that does minus four to a guy, and then you drop two from the top of your deck to help your trash pile go higher. And then you got to KO one of your Dressrosa types, and you're not really trying to KO himself. You're trying to either KO your Rebecca that's just sitting there that's useless, the searcher, after she searched. Or you can go for the KO on the Kairos, then use Kairos effect, rest your stage, or rest the leader so that you don't actually lose anything. So our Lamas is pretty cool. We got to go for that. Minus stats. Next up, this wonderful Dressrosa guy, Sabo, fixes your hand and gets your trash, whatever you need in the trash. What's good about Sabo is that you can trash things like Kairos and later on pick it up and play it with Rebecca or again trash Hina's because you rarely want to hard play Hina from the hand being that it's a three cost and she doesn't really do anything besides that one effect. But that's why we're playing for Kairos because even though he only KOs a one drop, you have so many cost reducers like Hina or Lumbus, one-legged toy soldier, and a few more other cards that I still have yet to go through. But yeah, this blocker and then he protects all your characters from being KO'd. So make sure you play your cast of characters first and then play him if that's what you're going to be doing because I've seen people forget to do that and I don't think he protects characters that are played after him. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I think he has to come out after the characters you have for him to protect them. But I may be wrong about that. Hopefully y'all can correct me or each other in the comments. But for Sabo, I found room for one Garp. I like Garp because he KO's something uh, that's higher cost at 4. So you can go Hina into him and pretty much knock out a very big dude that was originally costing 8. So that's pretty nice. And he's also a bigger stat character, so he's harder to get rid of. Or your opponent will have to do a cost reduction or an attack reduction just to get rid of him. And since we're doing OPO5, uh, I've reduced the number of Monkey D. Luffy's into 3. I feel like 3 is okay because he's very searchable. And after 1, you kind of don't need the others, or most likely you don't need them. And he's also, you can pick him up through Rebecca's effect as well, because he's a 7 cost. She picks up up to a 7 cost, so that's pretty good. So that's why it's okay if you only have 3 in the deck. And again, searchable. So he hits the active guys, and you return 7 for him to restand himself. That's why I only play 1 of Rob Lucci, because I don't want to be losing too much of my trash, because I'm thinking about going for Luffy's effect for the end game result. Next up, this weird card that nobody cares to play anymore, but I'm still playing it. 1 of is Aisho. And holding a Dawn, he gives minus 3 cost to everybody, so that's really damn good already. And then on play, if your opponent has 6 or more, you trash 2 from their hand at random. So this comes into play a lot because people don't worry about him anymore and have forgotten his existence completely. So I've won games on people because they're playing, let's say, um, Edward Newgate. And you can discard their big Edwards or their blocker markers or a couple of 2Ks randomly from their hand, and that'll actually help you win the game. And also against Sakazuki, you can destroy their Hound Blazes they were holding on to, their Ice Ages. And now if you knock out the 9 cost Yamato, you're pretty much golden because most people know that NL sucks without uh, the 9 drop Yamato. <laughs> it's not going to work. So I chose pretty good for that. It's the only way to snipe these cards out of the opponent's hand. And then one big boss card is just Kuzan, just to reduce cost and get rid of stuff. Only one of him and one of Aisha because they're not searchable anyway. So... That's it for the boss card lineups. It's Kuzan, Aisho, and three Monkey Luffy's. That's all I really found for the boss cards. Up next, we're lowering down the Colosseum to only two because it's very searchable. You have your leader to search it and the Rebecca character to search it. And after you see one, you never need to see another one ever again. So two is fine, and this isn't the most important thing about the deck anymore. So it's fine if you only see one. And if you see none, then that means you're seeing your other plays happen, like Rebecca, Rablucci, Hina, all that stuff. So... I found one for two Colosseums. This cool new card that I'm playing one of uh, has a very weird name. It, Hachi Kachi Patchy Starwork. This card gives an opponent's character minus three cost, and then a character with zero will not become active. That thing about zero not becoming active is almost never going to come up, but it's pretty good just because it costs one to reduce something by three. So you can use this with Kairos, KO, a four cost guy, and also it's Dress Rosa, so it's actually searchable, so that's pretty good. And not a bad trigger. Draw two, trash one. So if I'm room for one of this for added cost reduction, you could just take this out for Ice Age if you want. But like I said, this is searchable because it's Dress Rosa. Obviously, Ice Age is way better than this. 
but the fact that it's searchable is why I put it into this deck and not in Ice Age. Because your leader can search it and so can little Rebecca search it. Next up, I've only played one of Gum Gum King Kong and one of the Dress Rosa guys gets 6,000 power for the turn. Sometimes you do end up with 15 or more in the trash and then you do get your double attack to go, so that's pretty nasty. But besides that, giving 6,000 power to a guy is a great way to end the game. And even better when you have Luffy on board to try to go for that. To just KO two big dudes or go for attacking twice like that. Another search of Dress Rosa is Train of Bastardo. KOs a 4 cost or less. And if you got 15 or more, it KOs a 6 cost or less. Also with a really nice trigger as well. And, well, I forgot to say Kong Gun also has a really good trigger as well. All your events do in this deck. This is one that's searchable, so it's pretty good to be KOing. This is a control deck. It's pretty much what you're trying to do. So having this to remove your opponent's big guys. This in Hina is pretty crazy. This in One Leg Toy Soldier. You can knock out big dudes with this pretty easily. Last up, two of 3,000 worlds. Just for the fact that Borsalino exists and we have no way of getting rid of him otherwise. Or Sabo when he comes out on board. So that's why I play two of this. You can cut one out and put a third Treno Bastardo for that effect. But that's up to you. Anyway, this is the full deck profile. Uh, I could not fit all the cards on screen, but this is what I got. So let's just show it there. Inside the horrible sh light here, it's uh, it's going to be King Kong Gun. And yeah, this is my full deck profile. Let me know what you guys think about it and if how would you guys expand upon it. There's many little things you can switch around here. Like I said, you have one Solomon, one Idea, one Kobe. They can be switched around for other cards that I'm short of. Like if you want more of a Stardo, or if you feel the need to have an extra Coliseum, that's up to you. And I think my variety of boss cards is pretty neat. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, also, I did not choose to put in Mansherry. I tried it, I tried it, and it's just not working for me. I'd rather not use this effect because then I'm low on my trash, which means Luffy isn't going to do anything. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really not feeling Mantra, but she's an option if you guys think she can fit in for something else that you don't like from this deck profile. But that's that. Thanks for watching again. Peace, guys.